Now we're going to take a look at our season total sheet. We've reviewed all our other sheets, our production, our sales, our crop inputs, our overhead costs. Let's see how this breaks down, our labor. So let's see how this breaks down now. So if some of this is a repeat of information we've looked at. We're just trying to consolidate things into one place. This, there is no, I don't do any um, uh, um, uh, time view here. Everything here is just for the season. So this is what you would look at at the end of the year to get a summary. So your total trays, again, this is just breaking uh, things down by trays uh, and by harvest. So you can see we didn't do a third harvest, so that's empty. Uh, but just to, it gives you a good summary and then trays per crop there. Product sales, same thing. We break it down by harvest and by crop uh, and by size. So you can we can, again, get a sense of things. We can go to arugula and see how it breaks down uh, um, by the different sizes. And it's good to look at things by harvest because we can see, you know, our first harvest here is about 38,000 and our second one is about 74,000. So it's basically we're doing double for our Friday harvest. And that's because we've got this big farmer's market we do year round and just one small market that was a little smaller in our projections for a portion of the year. So as a strategy, you might start realizing like, oh, when we get more customers, we need to get more deliveries for our Tuesday. So. These are things that you do start to manage over time. This is a good way to take a look at that. So lots of good summaries here of, of how things look. With that, we're getting an average value of tray of $20.69. Let's go back to our goals where we put it at $25. We're a little shy there, so let's see what the outcome of that is. And 25 is a total guess, really, basically. Uh, so packaging costs, again, breaking the things down by the different units and different crops. So we've just got a good look at things there. We have a good sense of how this all relates. Our average packaging cost per tray at about 27. There's our growing medium cost and our average growing medium cost per tray. And then our seed costs there and our average seed cost per tray. And as you remember, a lot of these vary quite a bit. So these are just averages across all your trays. So your total inputs are about $2.82 per tray, a summary of our overhead, which is about $4.25 per tray. Um, didn't we have that at $5.05 earlier? No, good, yeah, we switched it right. Good. Um, our labor costs here at 15 bucks per tray. And so now we get to the meat of things here. Our average expenses per tray were $22.51. Our value per tray was $20.69, so we lost $1.82 per tray in this season. Our total revenue was $113,000, so more than we expected, but our expenses were $126,000, and so this year we're down $10,000. So you might look at this and go like, oh, fuck. Um, but that's not, uh, what we've done basically, we've done a lot of work, and we've looked at this now we're like okay you might be looking at this and going okay uh let's take a look at wages and let's just make a quick change here to see how quickly this can change it's year one for my business i'm going to change my labor cost to twenty dollars an hour and you know i'm doing a lot of labor there so let's go back and see okay so we've taken half of that away now we're at forty six hundred dollars Okay, okay, so I'm just gonna, I'll work at $20, $20 an hour this year. The hours we're not gonna reduce because it's probably not even representative of all the hours we're gonna do. Now I won't go through this, but now I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start going through things and I'm gonna start going like, where can we eliminate costs? Um, is our seed pricing accurate? You know, can we get our, our uh, packaging cost down? Now let's use the example I gave you before. We do small and medium packaging for our retail stuff, but our for our big things, we actually don't package it in a clamshell. We package it in just a bag that comes on a roll that's relatively cheap. So instead of getting a, you know a, a hundred for fifty-five bucks, we get a thousand for thirty-five dollars, and I pay about four cents for one of those trays. So let's go back now. I've made that change. Okay, we've just saved ourselves another thousand dollars. So we're making these packaging changes. Now we might be like, okay, well maybe this is maybe this is just how it is. Maybe this is what it's going to be. 
What's the other thing we can change? Well, there's two things when we get back into, um, into, into our sales. And that is we can try to increase our sales and not have too much more expenses. So just trying to think about economies of scale. And the other thing is we can bump up our prices. And so you can actually see we've got these prices pretty premium. Uh, Samantha, you know, we're not selling a lot of those trays to her. Maybe we need to be doing our, uh, our uh, grocer stuff at 425. So let's just do this. Let's just go down and put this to four, oops, 425. And again, the way it's set up, and this is why this is such a powerful model, is every week now in Tuesday it's changed to 425. It's all done. So we're done that, and because I'm doing that on Tuesdays, I'm going to do it on Fridays, same client. And the same one, 4.25. You can see they're doing more on these days. So all I've done is with one grocer change my pricing to 425, which may not be realistic. That might be a set price for that grocer, but I'm selling a lot of those small units, if you remember. Like that's a lot of sales and a lot of expenses with that packaging. Okay, so we've just saved ourselves another, we've gained ourselves more, right? So we've, we've, we've generated more revenue. So this is what I do as I go through and I start manipulating the numbers. And, and you can kind of go, well, isn't that kind of cheating? Well, it's only cheating if you don't have plans to meet those targets. I'm going to talk to that grocer and see about getting that uh, price to 425. And if they're good, that's great. So we've changed the one grocer there. Um, Go back to those orders. Um, yeah, like 21 bucks for a large thing. I don't think I'm going to charge people any more than that, to be honest. Dwight's paying a good price there. You know, we could try about bumping up our farmers markets, but those are decent numbers. So it might be, you know, um, I'm going to, going to go to my labor. I'm going to be like, you know what? I wanted to offer this position at 18, but you know, that's a $17. An hour position. I might lose some skill there, but you know, I just in the early season, it's not going to work. Okay, so now we're getting closer. So you can see how this tool, once you've got the base amount of stuff down there, uh, you can start manipulating things. Um, yeah, and as we saw, like a big change we can make. You know what? It's like year one. Uh, let's just start at 18 bucks an hour. I just left my cushy software engineering job. I got lots of money in the bank. You know, let's just, you know, it doesn't matter if I, if I break even. Okay, great. So what this means now by changing all that stuff and me making $18 an hour, and you can see how much labor makes a difference. Uh, now the business is profitable. Now what this means is I basically have $3,200 to spend back into the business, or I can just take that money as, as the business owner. Um, $3,200 profit on $114,000 in sales isn't a lot, though. It's, it's you know, it's 2%. It's not very much at all. And when you're figuring your labor into here, you want to be up around 10 to 20%. And I know we talk about 50% margins, but you're going to have a hard time doing that um, in, in many ways. And once again, you are paying yourself. So if you're doing $100,000 a year in sales and the business is making $20,000 in profit after you and all your expenses have been paid, that's not bad. That's a good amount of money to invest back into the business. It shows it's a viable model. It allows you to bump up your wages. And, you know, so you can be up to 25, 30 bucks an hour, right? And then maybe your profits are only you know, $5,000. But in reality, you and the business are the same. So if the business is making less money, it just means more of your wages are going back to the business to pay for infrastructure. So lots of different ways to look at that. But um, hopefully now looking at how this all ends up uh, working into our season totals gives you a sense of once you've gone through and set up the spreadsheet, you can start manipulating it to make this more profitable. And what you're going to do at a certain point to be like, OK, well, I want a 25 or 30 percent margin. Then you're generally going to your pricing and bringing your pricing up, trying to bring your labor costs down. Uh, but again, your pricing can only go so high and your labor costs can only go so low and still run a viable business. Lots to think about there. So this is an oversight into the version 2.0 of the Crop Planner. I'm going to do one more quick tutorial on the Crop Archive and uh, then you're off to the races. 
Remember to tag me in a comment at garlicpatch.com, write in your spreadsheet if you have any questions, and good luck.